Hey people of YouTube, it is the King Gramble here bringing a Pokemon X and Y battle for Mount Silver Battles. Um, before we get started, make sure to leave a like and comment down below, and I guess if you like the video, um, make sure to stop by my channel, the link should be in the description. So, today's battle is against Harkin, he's um, one of my subscribers actually, um, who I decided to battle, and it was a pretty good battle, so I decided I would um, upload it for Mount Silver Battles, because um, I really like the idea of the channel, and I think it would be good publicity for mine, so yeah, um, as you can, you're probably looking at my team and thinking, what, you've got a Beedrill and an Arbok, yes guys, I needed to show off the power of these two, they are amazing Pokemon, and you will see shortly, so let's get into this. Um, okay, so, yep, Harkin is issuing a challenge, and... Let's see, um, I think I lead off with Beedrill, yep, here's Buzz the Beedrill, guys, um, he's a really nice Pokemon, and, yeah, you guys should all go breed yourselves one, really, um, and he leads off with his Greninja, so he decides to go for an Ice Beam, and Beedrill just eats this up, and we go for a Brick Break, and this does some really nice damage on Greninja. Guys, look at that, Beedrill almost takes out a Greninja, this is, like, amazing, but, um, Beedrill is holding the leftovers, I've recently changed his item to, um, choice stuff because I think that better suits Beedrill because he really does need the speed to like outspeed um opponents because he honestly can't take a hit too well but um Harkin switches into his Charizard um pretty smart move because he predicted the brick break and Charizard can eat up any fighting type move really so um I decide to withdraw Beedrill here and I bring in Electivire so um yeah he's Electivire and he's a pretty nice Pokemon as well um I only just started using him because, I don't know, I haven't really, like, I only just started getting into UU battling, really, so this is my, um, UU team, which I've been testing out for, like, the past couple of days, really, um, and it's going pretty well, um, so Charizard goes for an overheat, and I think we take this, oh, no, we don't, so Charizard overheats, and I guess because it's in the sun, and... You know, Charizard's a pretty good special attacker. It does take out Electivire, so unfortunately, you can't really see Electivire's power today. That's alright. So I bring in um, Donphan here. He goes for a fly, which I'm okay with, because Donphan is my physical wall. And I get a free turn to set up rocks, really. So, um, yeah, that was a good turn for me. And I just switch out Donphan right away. And I think, let's see, I bring in Scrafty here, because... Um, I think this was a misclick, actually, because um, Scrafty is weak to flying-type moves, so... Unfortunately, I did misclick here, but I do manage to, um, I guess, make it okay. I don't know. You'll see in the um, future, but um, he brings out his Lucario, and I think I switch out here. Um, I just go for a fake out, so yeah, my Scrafty does carry fake out. Um, it is a speed, it's a jolly Scrafty, I think it is, so plus speed. So I have max speed IDs, and then I just halved it on HP and attack, but I bring my Arbok because. First, did he get that Intimidate drop off, and secondly, because he does carry the Earthquake, which is, um, because Lucario is weak to, um, ground type moves. So, Lucario goes for a Flash Cannon, we take that pretty nicely, um, actually. And, guys, you guys, you guys are gonna love this, um, you really will, but he goes for an Aura Sphere, so it is a special Lucario, um, I was actually expecting a physical one, but look at this, we just eat up that Aura Sphere like it's nothing, and go for the Earthquake, and guys, Yes, Arbok just took out a Lucario, um, you do not see that too often, but, yep, yeah, Arbok has taken out the Lucario, and, guys, that is, like, amazing, I love Arbok, but he reads out Generation, he's new too, so, I'm not too afraid of this thing, I think I just sack off, um, Arbok here, because I know he's done his job, and I don't think he's needed too much more in his battle, so I just let Mewtwo Shadow Ball me here, and, um, yeah, Arbok eats that again, and we get the crunch off, which is very nice, but I guess it doesn't really matter, because you, uh, because Mewtwo does, um, carry the recover, so, you know, I guess it's alright, I suppose, but I'll just go for protect here, purely to, um, I guess scout out what he's gonna do, and also get the Black Sludge health back, so, um, yeah, that's all nice, but, um, he goes for a recovery here, which I'm alright with, because it does let me get another crunch off, and also another turn of Black Sludge back. So Arbok is causing all kinds of troubles to Harkin here, um, it's funny that, um, like, I was not expecting, um, Arbok to do as well as he does do, but, um, it's good, so I'll just go for a protect here again, because I'm trying to heal up as much health as I can, really. 
um, to the point where I can eat up another Shadow Ball, but then I realized he has a Psychic. Like, I was expecting, I was kind of thinking he wouldn't have Psychic after, um, like, he's only just started using it, but he does go for the Psychic here, and unfortunately, that does take out Arbok. So, I'm okay with that, though, because Arbok is really nice. Um, so I just bring in Don Fan here, because he will eat up it here. Even though he's not specially bulky, I know he's going to eat up any hit from this Mewtwo. So, he decides to withdraw Mewtwo and goes in yeah, and goes into his Greninja, I think it's Death Border, which I guess is pretty smart, so I just go for an Earthquake here, and it does knock out Greninja, so, um, yeah, that's Greninja taken care of, and Donphan doing it very nicely this battle as well, so, Harkin brings in Flugo the Pidgeot, now this thing sucks, because I can't really touch it, um, with any of my Pokemon, because unfortunately Donphan doesn't carry the Stone Edge, um, I'm not running that set, I have Rapid Spin, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, and something else that I'm forgetting, so, um, yeah, Umbreon, I just had Umbreon in this battle, because I was still actually bringing up my UU team, so Umbreon isn't actually, um, part of the team, um, I was just using him, because he's a, I, he's, Umbreon's a really nice Pokemon, I guess, and I pretty much want him just to store out this picky up, so I go for a wish here, um, Oh yeah, so um, I mentioned earlier about my scrap here, how I misclicked him in to um, take that fly. Well, look what I do here, guys. Um, I switch out on Bjorn and actually bring in the scrap to get that wish health back up. So I was just, I've been waiting for like the right opportunity to do this for the whole battle, and I timed this perfectly because Pidgeot goes for the fly. So. Yeah, Scrafty is pretty much back in action, I guess, and um, I just switched Scrafty right back out because I do not want him taking another fly from the almighty Pidgeot. And yeah, I bring back an Umbreon to take the hit pretty much. Um, so now, because I don't have anything that can really touch the Pidgeot, I decide to um, just try Toxic Stall it because that's what Umbreon's good at. I know a lot of people don't like Umbreon because of that, but I'm, I like it. Um, but he does do some pretty smart plays with my Umbreon here, I guess. Um, you will see later on. But um, he goes for another fly, which is really annoying. This Pidgeot, yeah, this Pidgeot is annoying me a lot. But um, I know I can take another fly really nicely, so I'm not, I'm not switching out here. Um, so I just decided to go for another. Oh, I go for a protect, which was um, all right, I guess. Um, because that fly is going to do nothing to me. So yeah, that fly. I think he got uh, that fly. Um doesn't do anything because of the protect and I get that leftovers damage back so he withdraws his Pidgeot here um predicting the toxic I think and goes into Gen Blade to the Aggie Slash which was a really good play because um I I totally forgotten about this Aggie Slash so yeah but um I think I stay in here because I do carry the Dark Pulse on my Umbreon unfortunately I don't have what is it it's either Foul Play or Play Rough I can't remember but Umbreon can learn one of those moves but I don't carry it on my Umbreon because I couldn't. This is a. I, I don't know. Um, it's a move to move from Gen Five, so I couldn't really teach it to him because my Umbreon is um Kalos Spawn. So after he realizes I have the Dark Pulse, he switches out Den Blades, and yeah, I just go for another Dark Pulse because I wasn't actually expecting to switch out, and that does a lot of damage on um Lugo because it was a crit. But he goes for the Roost. I am all right with that because um I do have the Toxic ready to go, so. I finally get that Toxic off, and yeah, this Pidgeot will be slowly withered down. Um, yeah, so Pidgeot was the Pokemon which um, caused a lot of trouble for me this battle, but um, that's alright. So he goes for a Mirror Move, this is another smart thing he did, so Mirror Move and Toxic's my Umbreon. But I'm okay with that, because I believe I can outstall this something, so yeah, I am Toxic, but I decided to go for the Dark Pulse. Um, I don't, we were actually on Game Chat when this battle happened, so... Like, I was just talking, come on, man, don't, um, don't, like, stall out the whole battle, so, I think he goes, like, a few more roots before I actually take it out, but, um, yeah, I, he does eventually go down, which is all good, um, luckily he's not one of those people who, um, decide to, you know, stall out the battle for, like, 50 minutes. I really hate it when that happens, but, you know, that's alright, so that toxic damage is really starting to wrap up on, um, Pidgeot here, but I believe he goes for another... Roost? Um, yeah, he does. So here's another Roost, and um, let's see, I think I just Dark Pulse here, or Protect, I can't remember. Um, yeah, I just Dark Pulse, so yeah, I'm just slowly taking down this Pidgeot, really. Um, that's what happens for the next few turns, and then the real action starts happening again. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, this this is I don't think he Roosts here because I think he realizes that he's lost this small battle with Umbreon, 
because guys, Underdog will win any store battle um, you ever see, pretty much. So he hurricanes, and I'm specially bulky, so that does absolutely nothing to Umbreon. And yeah, that's the end of Pidgeot, guys. So he's left on one HP, but that toxic, oh, that toxic, that poison is gonna take him out. So that's all right. Um, guys, there's Pidgeot gone and done with. So finally, the stall part of this battle is over, and yeah, I decided to switch out Umbreon here, I think, because that toxic damage is really starting to do a lot. So he brings in his Aegis Slash. Which I guess was an alright play because he knows I probably want to switch out here. But I decided not to switch out because I was actually predicting a sword stance. But he does carry the retaliate on his Aegis Slash. I don't see that at all really. So um, I do go for a wish which kind of sucks because um, Poison's going to be taking me out anyways I guess. So my Umbreon has finally been taken down. The wall itself. And yeah there goes Umbreon. So... Um, alright, so there goes Umbreon, and I, th I can't remember exactly what I bring in, it might be Donphan, yeah, he's Donphan, because he does carry the Earthquake, which is super effective against Aegislash, so he decides to go for a King Shield here, I guess, probably to scout out what I'm going to do, um, I, I thought it was pretty obvious what I was going to do, I did just go for the obvious play, but, um, yeah, that's Earthquake, and he protects himself, so that's alright, and he decides to whiff your Aegislash, because he does not want that thing taken in an Earthquake, and he brings out Drago the Charizard, there's another good play by him because um, Earthquake does not affect Charizard. But that stone damage is going to do a lot of damage, and yeah, so does Earthquake, and it doesn't affect Drago, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I do have the Quick Claw and Donphan because I literally made this um Pokemon like I gave them items literally a minute before the battle began. But unfortunately, just overheat, and this Charizard's overheat is so like overpower is ridiculous. Luckily, I do have the Sturdy though. And just hang on in there, so um, I just go for another ice shard. Luckily, I'm pretty sure this does take it. Oh, it doesn't take it out. I'm not sure why he went for the fly here, but he goes for a fly, so that's all right for me. Um, I do decide to sack off Don Fan, that's all right. Um, Don Fan did his job really. I'm, pr I'm pretty confident I have this battle, so I'm all right to let Don Fan die and get the free switch in. So I bring Scrafty here, guys, and I'm confident that he can do quite a bit here. I just fake him out because, you know, that's going to kill the Charizard, really, and it is a priority move. So, I do get the free Moxie boost as well, which is very nice. And, yeah, I have actually a Scrafty Sweep on my channel. Um, It's pretty good. Oh, uh, an almost Scrafty Sweep. Um, uh, he, Scrafty took out, like, five of the opponent's Pokemon. So, if you guys like Scrafty and want to see him sweep some Pokemon, um... Make sure to check that video out, I guess. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, my channel will be in the description if you like my content. So, this Aggie Slash is about to retaliate um, Scrafty. Luckily, we do take this pretty nicely because Scrafty is um, naturally a very physically bulky Pokemon, I guess. So, um, I think I... What do I do here? <laughs> I can't actually remember, but he can shields, and I'm pretty sure I... Um, let's see. I Ice Punch. So, um, yeah, and unfortunately I do get the attack harshly drop, um, which is really, really unfortunate. So that's just going to do nothing to this Aegis Slash. I'm looking pretty, um, this is a pretty close battle, um, yeah, so he, um, well, uh, I, I just lost four words, but, um, he's sacred towards Scrappy, and unfortunately that does take him out. So this is going down to the Y here. I think I have, um, two Pokemon left, or... Something, but um, none of them can actually touch Aegis Slash, so he withdraws them blades when I bring in Beedrill because, like, he should be. He's very afraid of it and does not want to take a hit from Beedrill, guys. Um, so those stone damage is going to do some nice damage, I guess. And I just go for a sword stance here because I know it's my only hope of winning um, the battle because, you know, I, other, if I didn't do that, um, Beedrill wouldn't be able to touch Aegis Slash really at all. So. I do get the Sword Sand stuff, and he goes for a Thunderbolt, I guess just to do as much damage as he can on Beedrill, but Beedrill does take that pretty nicely, but unfortunately he gets the Prowlesses off. I guess it doesn't matter too much because, um, you know, actually it's kind of a good thing because if I can take a hit from this Aegis Slash, um, you know, then I have the, um, I'm able to attack when, um, Aegis Slash is in his offensive position. But you guys, so it's down to one Pokemon each now, um, Beedrill against Aegislash, but unfortunately guys, Aegislash does get the better of Beedrill, because Beedrill's defense is hopeless, 
He goes for the retaliate and that does take out the Eagle. So guys, that is the battle. Unfortunately, I did lose the battle, but I thought, you know, why not upload it? Because it was a really nice battle. And yeah, if you guys like the video, make sure to leave a like and comment down below and check out my channel. It will be in the description. And yeah, see you guys. I'm out.